For my digital humanities lesson, I used the Mini Studio on Digo. And I also decided to use um, one of the lessons that I did in methods for my unit project, um, one of the random ones from my unit that I didn't actually get to see how it would go in the classroom um, and add some more technol technology into it and see how that went. And um, so for this, it was a lesson um, within the True Colors unit um, all about making kids better people, stuff like that. Um, where it's at the end of the unit and it's based on taking what the kids have learned and how they've learned how to, you know, spread being good people and stuff within the middle school into furthering that and putting it out into the world. Um, so making it more real world. So in this revision, um, technology really drives the lesson and the students are using Digo um, to read, highlight, and comment on articles that will be that are in a class pool that I created. Um, and they'll have to read them, highlight, comment, and then read another person who had already finished and read, highlight, comment back on that. Um, and I thought this is really cool because Digo is pretty easy to figure out, but it's so helpful. It's so nice to just not have to print out an article or anything like that, but just see everything online. And students will be able to kind of see it in real time, you know, like actually just comment right after one of their classmates did and see what they are thinking. Um, which I think is really cool, and I think that 6th or 7th graders would really think is cool. Um, after this, students move on to, after reading the articles about um, different world events and that stuff like that, like stuff in Haiti or wars, you know, anything that's going on in the world, and, you know, seeing how some people are looking to fix those problems, anything like that, it's going to go into what can they do. So next, students use um, flip cameras, which wasn't a mini studio, but we did use flip cameras in digital humanities, and I wanted to incorporate that too. And, you know, before this, this lesson didn't have much technology in it. Um, I just had printouts of the articles to give, um, and I just, students had a choice of using flip cameras to do these interviews or, you know, making a podcast or using iPods and all this different stuff. And I thought it was a little bit too crazy. There are a little bit too many choices, especially when they might not know how to use any of them um, or really, like, have had the resources in school before. So I brought it down just to using the flip cameras, and students are going to interview each other um, after reading those articles about what can they do. Um, you know, if they read an article on all the stuff going on in Haiti, what can they do to help as a 6th or 7th grader? what can they do? Um, you know, why is it important to help these people? How would you show love to them? How can you make a difference? How are you going to change the world? And they get to use the flip cameras to interview each other, which makes it a little bit more fun. And also they get to see it afterwards and they have, you know, something documented saying, this is what I'm going to do, which I think is really cool. Um, and then they're also, you know, they can use the flip cameras or, or some other technology or something like that to finish the homework, which is um, looking at the idea of paying it forward. So they can go on the wiki and talk about how they're going to think of these three people and how they can pay it forward to them and um, how those three people can keep going on and on from there. Um, I think what's cool about adding the technology to this lesson um, after seeing it without it it really did enhance it, and I think that that's, you know, sometimes technology can distract from what's actually going on, but I think with this it really helps because, for one, these students at 6th and 7th grade, they're kind of just starting to do typing and all that stuff, and so it's helpful for them to keep using the computer in a more real-world way instead of just in typing class, you know, and kind of playing, like, the typing computer games, but now they'll actually have to type and, like, write comments in about the articles and stuff like that. Um, so I really like the idea of, the, of that. One problem I can definitely see is time. This could easily be a two or three day lesson, um, depending on how it goes, especially because if they've never used Digo before, there is gonna have to be a period of time where they're learning what to do. Um, and you know, it's not too hard, but still, there's gonna have to be that time to learn. And also, again, as middle scores, they're not the fastest at typing. Um, like we all are, so that's going to take a little bit of t more time than you would, you know, think it would to read and comment and highlight on something like that. So that could easily be a full class period. And then 
um, conducting the interviews with the flip cameras. That's another thing. Get in, you know, give a sixth or seventh grader a camera and who knows what's going to happen. Um, so I think that that could also be just a second day of this lesson, doing the interviews and maybe even a third day of just watching what they came up with. Um, but overall, I think this is really cool. I'd love to do this with my seventh graders in the spring. Um, you know, maybe not in the context of a true colors unit, um, but I could definitely see myself using Digo if I had the chance and definitely using flip cameras. I think there's tons of possibilities with those besides just, you know, interviewing and stuff like that. But either way, I can't wait to try and use these um, in the classroom and see what the kids can do with it.